Now we finally arrived at here in the last bit of the statement and the uniqueness. Now we have this Picard iteration and we have defined this function yx which didn't appear in here. The zx is a possibly different solution and we show that the value, the difference between these two values, what zx and yx, which is expressed in this way, approaches zero. So if this is just re replaced with yx, that will be yx minus zx will be flat zero, not approaching zero because yx is a limit value of this one. Let me say this thing before I move on to the next part. The zx is the fictitious solution. The fact is that it doesn't exist, but at this stage we don't know if there is a different solution or not. We are just assuming we happen to find a solution maybe in a different form, so we don't know if it is the same thing or not. But this is supposed to be a continuous differentiable solution. To establishing this type of thing again requires to staying in this type of a box. Then we don't know what this zx is, so the logic goes like this. Because at least we know zx is a continuous function, it starts from here, may rapidly increase and escape this box again, even for this smaller beta value. But because it's a continuous function, there must be even smaller and closer value to x equals a, such that zx cannot escape this upper bound y0 plus r, y0 minus r. So we readjust this one to even smaller one, such that zx stays in the box, yn of course stays in the box. So here's the statement I just said and about the continuity of the zx. There must be the beta tilde around that value of a. And z of x, since it starts from y0, must stay inside this box y0 plus r and y0 minus r. So if you choose even smaller than beta or beta tilde, um, which if you call that one would be B star, whatever the smallest one, well, um, Z is going to stay inside the box and Y and Z are going to stay in the box. So this is our starting point, then X and Z are in the box, so we have a control on the values and the partial derivatives and those things that come into play. Since we're about to compare this Y and values of Y and Z, we wrote down what we mean, what we know um, in different form, the Picard iteration value and the differential integral equation that z is supposed to satisfy here. And if you subtract these two values and y0 cancels, and x and x a, the limits of the integrals are the same, so we bring it inside. Again, this is the situation we um, apply mean value theorem on the y part. But via this integral um, inequality, if we make this one bigger by taking the absolute value inside the integral, and we replace this quantity to, with the uh, mean value, the values of the partial derivative multiplied by difference of input, yn minus 1 minus z. Here we need the fact that yn minus 1 hat is in between yn minus 1 and z. If uh, they're both inside the box, then we can guarantee that this point is in the box, and that's where we use this property here. Since this point is in the box, and this can be replaced by this maximum possibility, m2, again, this m2 value is actually the maximum was a lot bigger box, but we're in a smaller region, so it still serves as an upper bound, and we have this integral part. Now, we wrote this um, difference of yn between yn and, and z in terms of... Um, difference between yn minus 1 and z. So we can do some recursive uh, unfolding process to um, estimate this one nicely in terms of um, x and a. So I abbreviated this one as a gap. It's a gap of the gk. So gkt is this um, a difference, difference between these two values, ykt and zt. So the above statement can be summarized as follows. The gap gn is less than or equal to m2 times the integral of um, the gap gn minus 1. This part is a lot like that estimation of a little gk that we did before that looked just like this one. So I skipped the computation. If you unfold it one at a time, gn and gn minus 1, and um, replace this inequality again and again, then we'll easily arrive at here, gn um, is less than or equal to 
this tailor-like term. So now what we want to show is that um, this right-hand side, the upper bound of this GN approaches zero. So M2 is fixed and beta is fixed. Up there is an nth power and down there is nth factorial and y0 is fixed. This is a standard result in a calc 2, but let me explain briefly why this one approaches 0. It is the following. When n reaches eventually some value k, where k is bigger than m2 beta while m2 is just fixed and denominator is increasing. So we keep multiplying. There's more, many, many copies of m2 beta, but from this point on, the k is bigger than m2 beta, and k plus 1 is bigger than m2 beta, and k plus 2 is bigger than m2 beta, and so on. So while if you look at more and more terms on this side here, um, m2 beta is fixed, and you can see that k plus whatever this one really goes to in lar as, as large as you want. So no matter what happened before that part, from this point on, and this will definitely um, a lot smaller um, because the denominator gets really big. So we can easily see that that approaches zero, um, but you can find the formal proof in the typical calculus textbook. But this is why, um, pretty much why this one approaches zero. Since this definition of a GN is difference between YN and Z, and this one approaches zero, that forces this entire thing that approaches zero. What is the limit and approaches um, y and x? That is yx, so this proves that yx and zx is exactly the same value. So that uh, function must have been the same even in the smaller interval. So here I'm showing just the existence and uniqueness part of the statement. And if we define um, yx using this Picard iteration, it satisfies this differential equation with the initial condition. And if there is some different form of a solution, we can argue that those values must be exactly the same as what we have found here in the Picard iteration. Therefore, that's the only solution we have. Thank you. That was um, a lot of work for undergraduate students to absorb, but this is uh, important because th and the context of this differential equation problem arises from uh, physics and natural um, problems, so knowing existence and especially the uniqueness adds a lot of meaning to the solution to the physics and physical situation. So I think knowing why this one works like this is important part of uh, understanding why certain part of the nature works in a certain way. Thanks.